Hey, hi, and hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, uh, here to do a little bit of a retrospective as uh, June of this month. It's been 10 years since the release of the very popular and very critically acclaimed Deaf Heaven album, Sunbather, which I think is one of the most well and positively reviewed albums of 2013. Uh, nearly every music website had just uh, so many nice things to say about this record. And while I myself uh, did love it, when I think back to this album, I don't just simply think of the record itself, but rather a time or an era or a vibe for heavy music in general. The explosion of American black metal music, specifically uh, shoegaze-influenced black metal music or atmospheric black metal music in the late 2000s and the distance with which it extended into the 2010s. In order to do this video and do it justice, I am wondering how far back I really need to go to explain uh, black metal music as a sound, as a culture, as a concept. Let's put it this way. While American and Western black metal music uh, was certainly a thing prior to the 2000s. Up until that point, it was primarily a European and Northern European export, but that shifted in a really intense way in the late 2000s, uh, most notably thanks to, uh, I believe, the sophomore Wolves in the Throne Room record, Two Hunters. Wolves in the Throne Room have come out with some amazing music over the years, and Two Hunters was a splash of a record at the time that was seemingly turning everyone's heads on the internet. Not only was it convincing loads of people in America, in Canada, to listen to black metal music who hadn't even really considered it as a genre before, but the record was gaining so much attention. Uh, it was even getting hate from black metal purists uh, who favored more, of course, uh, you know, the old school shit, the Scandinavian shit. And while much of the hate uh, that this record got was kind of intense and very polarizing, uh, really kind of labeling it as a hipster black metal and not real, not true, it's fake. Yeah, once this record dropped and it, it made the splash that it did, uh, th there was really no turning back, like Pandora's box was open. And that led to interest for up and coming groups, uh, be they, you know, Germany's Lantlos or Ireland's Altar of Plagues. Groups who were kind of already, you know, existing and doing their thing were being discovered uh, by many of these listeners, uh, be they uh, Francis Alsay, or you also have um, Agaloc. You have the very folky Panopticon. You have, of course, Liturgy 2, which I think is one of the best long running modern experimental American black metal projects out there. And look, these are just really some of the most major bands to uh, kind of crop up in the field. For all of these groups, there were like five or six others that were just approaching things with a very uh, basic, plain sound and have kind of been forgotten over the past 10 years because they didn't really contribute to the genre in any profound or meaningful way. What they did ultimately was just kind of run of the mill for the sound and style. However, the San Francisco band Deaf Heaven uh, came through originally, in my opinion, uh, sounding like one of those bands with their debut. While I think the vocal performances, the guitar chords, and the drums on uh, this debut record uh, were pretty good, solid. I wouldn't say they were exactly like, you know, unique for the atmospheric black metal field at the time. Sure, there were some shoegaze and some post-metal influences mixed in there somewhere, but uh, that was the case for a lot of their competition uh, in the early 2010s. So out of the gate, the band is kind of getting lost in the crowd, jockeying for position a little bit. It wouldn't be until their sophomore record, Sunbather, uh, they would make the biggest splash in this uh, little micro genre of metal to the point where the popularity of the record kind of transcends this uh, little American atmospheric black metal music bubble. Once again, when this record came out, it was getting one positive review after the next. It was even convincing people to listen to the genre who just weren't really into it before. There's even this kind of legendary image over here where the album cover was uh, sneakily incorporated into like an Apple iOS 7 for the iPhone presentation. It's, it's 
it's sort of here in the middle. So I guess there were even people over at Apple's marketing or, you know, graphics department who were just kind of jamming this album. This is kind of an interesting metaphor for the popularity of the record itself, because uh, seemingly in a cultural sense, it was just kind of sneaking itself in just about everywhere. I guess the question is, why exactly did this record have this effect. There's a lot of things about this album's marketing and its sales and the way it kind of spread on social media that uh, I, I just don't have the ability to quantify or detail in an effective manner. But I can at least tell you from an aesthetic analysis uh, for a metal album, this thing is pretty approachable, especially for a black metal album, which historically is a genre uh, that with its sound and its lyrics and also its cover art typically does everything that it can to push away outside. Black metal historically has tended to be a very, um, you know, insular genre, which is why, you know, bands like Deaf Heaven and Wolves in the Throne Room uh, got so much hate out of the gate. But that polarization and that aggression uh, would also be what drew a lot of people to these records as well, because at the time there was so much conversation being generated around these albums and the music in them was genuinely good, which I think is also the case for Sunbather now. I think the biggest criticism I can lob at this record 10 years later is that while it does creatively fuse a lot of different ideas from many different genres, be it black metal, shoegaze, post-rock, spoken word and ambient stuff to a degree. There are some pretty instrumental passages on the record too. I like a lot of the ideas and genres that it's borrowing from, but uh, I wouldn't say this record does anything profound with those influences outside of combine them in a way that very few other records had. Uh, the vocals also have a bit of a screamo element to them at points as well. And maybe this also adds to the record's popularity because seemingly people who were all into these underground and niche genres of music, if they were open-minded enough, could listen to this record and uh, get into it. Even if every other influence cycling within it uh, wasn't their favorite genre of music, there was that one sound, that one idea, that one one aesthetic bit of it that you can kind of hold on to and enjoy singularly while gradually kind of warming up to all the other sounds the record had to offer that may be new to you. So knowingly or unknowingly, this record assembled a lot of different vibes together in such a way where it just kind of hit with the respective fan base for that genre that they were kind of like pulling inspiration from. That and the production on this record is really good. It's a quality and great sounding record, even if it is a very heavy and a harsh album. The drums hit hard, the vocals are harsh and fiery and passionate, uh, the guitars are overwhelming, and the brightness of the tone of the guitars matches that of the cover, which is a pretty unique cover for a metal album, by the way. We don't typically see records that have uh, sort of a metal slant to them uh, that come across as being so warm and bright and inviting in a way with a, uh, you know, kind of a very cheeky serif font that's uh, altered and changed around a bit so that you can't fully read all the letters, but you can make make them out. I mean, the cover of this thing looks like what you would typically get out of either a, a summery chill wave record or some kind of like, you know, twangy indie pop album. Not a metal project, that's for sure. And if I'm correct, at the time this record dropped, it came out via Death Wish Incorporated, which uh, there were very few heavy rock centric labels around this time that had as much cred in the indie scene as Death Wish did, which I think is another reason this record was marketed so effectively. I can't imagine uh, kind of getting uh, the spread that it would have in, you know, the music pub sphere if it were released, you know, via Relapse or Roadrun or something like that. So again, the genre mix is interesting. The production sounds great. The art and the overall aura of the record uh, is relatively approachable for a metal album. And uh, lastly, the songs are really good. The band's performances on these tracks are tight and exhilarating. The chord progressions uh, inspire not just like, you know, rage. Of course, everything is aggressive and loud much of the time, and it sounds very visceral, but there's, you know, a real uh, uh, sense of uh, emotional pain and turmoil and sadness to a lot of the melodies and harmonies throughout this record, which translate really nicely through the distortion, mind you. The overall experience of the record is very dynamic too, between the spoken word passages and the instrumental passages and the heavy highs and the forlorn lows. While again, there are Western black metal artists and albums uh, that I think you know were more interesting 
during this period of time. We will link you to some of that stuff down below if you're looking for more recommendations in this field, in this vibe. Still, those records didn't have the splash that this one did, and I think a lot of that has to do with uh, just everything that it was incorporating. Uh, it did all of it very well, far above average. And on top of that, it didn't really experiment so much or go so out there that it became an alienating listening experience. As a result, what we have with Sunbather, I think is quite possibly the most listenable and accessible black metal album of all time. Yes, this record is far from a, a black metal purist type experience. The album at the very least is still black metal adjacent, and I can't really think of another record in this genre uh, that is as popular, did as many numbers, made as big of a splash. And yeah, just because something is popular doesn't mean it's good. Of course, of course, of course. But Sunbather is one of those instances where you do have something underground that does gain a lot of attention and support, and it is legitimately a really good artistically sound release. And 10 years later, I still think the record sounds sick and uh, you know could potentially serve going forward as a little bit of a gateway uh, drug to this era of black metal music uh, that turned up a lot of interesting releases. You know, it's unfortunate that in less than a decade, um, a lot of the creative juices I think in this subgenre kind of you know vaporized. Of course, there's still good and quality black metal music being made today. I'm just saying specifically in terms of you know this little. Uh, atmospheric black gaze roller coaster that we were on from the 2000s to the 2010s uh, did dissipate pretty quickly as many groups jumping onto the bandwagon were uh, kind of saturating things with mostly the same sound. Then a lot of the bands that originally popularized the whole thing uh, started branching off into, you know, different directions artistically as a means to maybe kind of differentiate themselves and just kind of do something that uh, uh, isn't just a copy of their last record, which Def Heaven did in their own way as well, because, uh, you know, they could have easily come out with three, four more sunbathers. For sure, there would have been a passionate fan base supporting them and doing that. But even if their material and opinion uh, past this record has not been the best. Uh, they still did go forward and try some different shit. But yeah, again, 10 years later, I think this record is still sounding great, still sounding interesting. I think it's a, uh, you know, a high watermark for uh, an intriguing little moment in the underground, uh, which we may never see anything, you know, like again. And if you have not listened to this record yourself, I highly recommend that you do. Check out my review, check out the record, check out all the other bands that I mentioned. And yeah, I'm going to leave it there. You guys are the best. Love you. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Def Heaven, Sunbather, uh, forever.